Welcome to Sunday night's big £8,000 game here on HQ Trivia. I'm Beric Livingston. 9th of September is the day many sources say was the first time the word bug was used in relation to a machine glitch and where we get the term computer bug. The story goes, in 1945, US Naval officer Grace Hopper was inspecting a fault on a giant Harvard Mark II computer and found a moth on a relay, which she removed with tweezers and taped into her logbook, noting that the computer had a bug, and the term debugging followed. It's kind of true, but the actual story is more nuanced, and we're all about facts here on HQ, so I'll tell you a bit more. Firstly, the computer in question came into service in 1947, so the story's off by two years, and it probably wasn't Grace Hopper herself who removed the moth or wrote the log entry. More importantly, the term bug had been used in the same context for some time. Thomas Edison used it in 1889. Some dictionaries carried it from the 1930s. However, there was an actual bug in that early computer. It was found on the 9th of September, and the log book does have the actual moth taped inside, the crumbly remains of which you can go and see at the Smithsonian if you want to. Plus, Grace Hopper was a brilliant woman and contributed a huge amount to computing, so she's worth knowing about anyway. Right, enough buggy banter. There's £8,000 on the table tonight to win or split if you can get all 12 questions right. 10 seconds for each, so let's get bug-eyed for Q1. What's the name of the car that Batman drives? Top Catmobile, Batmobile, Chit Chatmobile. Oh, Batman, he's had some great motors, including the Tumbler, which used a chassis from a P38 Lightning plane. My personal favorite's that one from the 60s, the big long crazy old one with the flames and things. If you went for Chit Chat here, then you're thinking of that other flying car, Chitty Chatty Bing Bong. Anyway, putting his name on it like the rest of his toys, it's the Batmobile. And wholly correct answer for 122,760 of you. The first Batmobile was actually red, which didn't really fit in with the whole Dark Knight theme. Q2. A pub is a shortened term for which of these establishments? Public house, public enemy, public right of way. Ah, a bit of a pub quiz now. I love a good pub quiz. You're looking at the pub quiz of the future here on HQ. With no closing time. It's perfect. It may turn you into public enemy number one, but that's not what a pub is short for. Cutting all of us a key, it's a public house. Yeah, raise a glass, 120,947 of you got that right. Yeah, uh, the modern pub can be traced back to Roman times, but they've only been hanging out with quizzes since the 1970s. A big shout out to Ruben. Hello to Bob the Builder from Kent. To Judge and the IMG Studios crew covering the US Open final tonight. Cool. To Lisa in Fuerteventura and to Elisa, get well soon. And to Josh playing from hospital, same to you. Happy 25th birthday to Louise. Charlotte, Danny says well done on your driving test. And to Isabel and Abby, I hear you have choreographed a dance to the HQ music. Send it in, I would love to see it. Q3, in which sport did Rebecca Adlington win two gold medals at the 2008 Summer Olympics. Cycling, rowing, swimming. She set a new British, European, Commonwealth and Olympic record and she's now got a sports center and a high-speed train named after her. We all cheered her on in Beijing, but what event was she dominating? Water champion, it's swimming. Ah uh, yeah, swimming and making a splash. 101,904 of you. Becky was the first British swimmer to do a double since 1908 and even broke the world record in the 800 meters freestyle final. Not bad for a 19 year old. It's going to be a brilliant week on HQ. On Tuesday afternoon, we have James Veach hosting a show. You may have seen him here before. He's brilliant and hilarious, so tune in for that. Then, Thursday is another theme night and beep beep baby because it's fashion. Yeah, from Kanye's shoes to Lady Gaga's, ooh, whatever Lady Gaga's wearing, what even is that? I don't know. It's going to be fashion, and it'll be fun, so join us for that. Q4. Koh Kut and Koh Mak are islands belonging to which country? Thailand, Fiji, Vietnam. Two beautiful islands, despite my pronunciation. Now, there is a co-op down the end of my road, but where will you find its floaty family members? The place I got this from, but um, it's Thailand. 
Thailand, yeah, Ko meaning island in Thai, 49,760, if you got that right, yeah, a few thought Fiji, three, four, there, and arm. Thailand may be famous for its nightlife, but these islands don't even have one club between them. Sounds perfect. Q5, which object was named as the first non-human man of the year by Time magazine in 1982? The computer, Rubik's Cube, compact disc player. Yeah, it's now person of the year but was man or woman of the year up until 1999. We were all crowned in 2006 because the person of the year was you. And you, and you, and you. Anyway, no, not you, yeah, you. Uh, but who beat us to it by 24 years? Control, alt, deleting the competition. It's the computer. The computer, and it does compute for 22,646 of you, but that was a very beastly question. We lost 31,000 on that one. All right, well, you're playing on a mini one right now, but PCs were only starting to appear in homes at the time. Q6. Which of these dances is not used as a code word in the NATO phonetic alphabet? Waltz, Foxtrot, Tango. Officially, the International Radio Telephony Spelling Alphabet, adopted in the 50s. They say dancing is the language of love, but who got rejected from this alphabet? Triple timing on to the next round, it's Waltz. One, two, three, one, two, three, 24,210 of you got that right. NATO uses whiskey instead of W, which explains why they need a phonetic alphabet in the first place. Q7, which movie was inspired by a story that was printed on greetings cards? It's a Wonderful Life, The Princess Bride, Toy Story. A lot of cinematography inspired by paintings like The Dark Knight, like Francis Bacon, Forrest Gump, Norman Rockwell, but what about a whole story? These three movies would all make fabulous greetings cards, but which film came about the other way around? Great on paper, even better on film, it's a wonderful life. And so it is for 15,089 of you who got that right. Philip Van Doren Stern couldn't find a publisher for his story, but that got a lot easier after it was nominated for five Oscars. Q8. What does the letter K stand for in Pakistan? Karachi, Kashmir, Khyber. This is a really interesting one. Not a lot of people know that the letter K in Pakistan stands for anything, but it does. It is an acronym for the regions it was originally made up of. But who put the K in Pakistan pumping out the jumpers? It's Kashmir. Yeah, Kashmir, 7,024, have you got that right? Another one that was pretty beastly, about 10,000 we lost there. Punjab, Afghania, Kashmir, and Sindh all chipped in a letter while Baluchistan dominated the word tan for the end of it, Pakistan. Yeah, credited to a pamphlet from 1933, that name. Anyway, onwards to Q9. Which of these songs was written in a car? Hey Jude, Satisfaction, Good Vibrations. Gorillas apparently wrote the whole of the fall on an iPad in the back of their tour bus. A little smaller scale, this one. Three songs everyone loves driving to, but which one was actually written in a car? Created by a Beatle inside an Aston Martin, it was Hey Jude. And the song might go na 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 na, but it's yeah, 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 for 2,335. But that was the first savage question of the day. We lost 5,800 of you on that one. Yeah, it was, I mean, a lot of you went for good vibrations, which kind of has that vibe that it sounds like it might have been written in a car. Satisfaction, yeah, that was written by Keith Richards in a dream, apparently. He was dreaming about it, woke up and jotted it down, but no. Hey Jude was written in a car. McCartney wrote the song to help Julian Lennon during his parents' divorce. Originally, it was called Hey Jules. All right, Q10. The symbol for the US Democrat Party can be traced back to an insult aimed at which president? Andrew Jackson, Abraham Lincoln, Thomas Jefferson. Yeah, interesting history of US political parties is as convoluted as ours. These are three presidents who received plenty of flack, but who was labeled a stubborn jackass by his opponents? The butt of this joke, it was Andrew Jackson. A really interesting dude, actually. Fought lots of jewels, had bullets lodged in his, uh, in his chest from them. 1,093 of you got that right. Just a tiny weenie bit beastly. Jackson took the insult and turned it into an icon, putting a donkey on all of his election posters. Q11. Which of these artists has the most Grammy Awards? Björk, Alessia Cara, Katy Perry. Three US presidents have Grammy Awards, would you believe? Grammy used to be called Gramophone. 
She's been nominated 14 times, but Björk hasn't won a Grammy yet. What? The only one to have won one at all, it's 2018's best new artist, Alessia Cara. Yeah. She used to be called Caracciolo, but she dropped the Ciolo because YOLO and 599 of you got that right. All right then, acceptance speech at the ready because we're outraging into the final round. Still can't believe Björk does not have any I don't actually care about Katy Perry, but there we go. Q12, the box set of which movie had DVD commentaries by people who both loved it and hated it? Kill Bill, Die Hard, The Matrix. Yeah, uh, audio commentaries go back to Laserdisc times. You can find them in the 1980s. Anyone remember what a Laserdisc looks like? It was like a DVD, but gigantic. Anyway, you've really got to love a film to watch a DVD commentary, but who got some haters in to make it? Only one person didn't enjoy Die Hard, and they threw him out the window at the end of it. <laughs> Great first film. Garbage sequels. It's the Matrix trilogy for the win. And taking the right pill, 261 winners tonight. Coming through on the audio commentary question, yeah, they've got some philosophers who love The Matrix and some critics who hate it on the later editions of the DVD and on the Blu-ray. There have been some great ones on different films, like the FBI profiler speaking on Silence of the Lambs commentary, or Brian Cox, the physicist, speaking on Sunshine. Anyway, 261 of you knew that and went through. Congratulations, you have £30.65 or £30.66. Well done to Illy Lucas, to Ben Devlin, to Limram, to Summy Tuck, uh, and to a teddy bear there, to a uh, illuminated crown. You've all done brilliantly. Good to see you here, as always. Thank you for playing. Hope you had fun. I'm Beric Livingston. That's my ats. Follow me if you feel like it. Send me a shout requests or just say hi. As I said, a brilliant week coming up on HQ. James Veach, Tuesday afternoon. Fashion theme on Thursday. And the next game is tomorrow at 9pm with another £1,000 to win. Our usual mixed bunch of questions and loads of useful information to learn. Till then, enjoy the tail end of your weekend. See you soon. Bye. <laughs>